We're live? Yeah, we're live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of 30 Minutes with a Millionaire. Um, I'm your host of the show, Joshua Crisp. Hopefully, you guys aren't new to the YouTube channel, but if you are, take a quick second and hit that subscribe button next to it. Click the notification bell. Usually, every week, we try to come on here, and I try to pour into you guys and help you guys get unstuck in your business, help you guys create momentum in your business, and help you guys just increase um, your income, your impact, and your influence. So if you're new to the channel, there's also tons of helpful videos. This is the largest private label online Amazon business channel um, on YouTube. Almost 400 videos with exclusive YouTube series like the Seven Figure Product Series. If you haven't checked those out, I'm super proud and excited about that series, which we look to find products that are generating over seven figures per year. I personally order them with my own money. I review them live here in my studio. We, can, uh, we critique them give you constructive criticism about the product, show you how to find these products and how to scale an online physical product brand or business. The whole goal is to have your money work for you so that you're not working for it and to be able to run a business from anywhere in the world during your spare time using just a laptop. So if you guys can hear me, you guys can see me, you guys are tuning in live, go ahead and drop a yes down below. And again, guys, everything, anything goes on the show. I don't really come on here um, wanting to teach anything specific. It's all about helping you guys answering your questions um, about previous videos, about where you are in the business and just helping you guys get to the next level. So as you guys can see, the only dumb question is a question is not asked. And when often asked, what is one of the things that I would recommend a beginner or I would recommend anyone do, um, believe it or not, it's free. It's become a very skilled question asker. Identify how to ask very specific questions. Identify what questions that you should ask and be very specific because in order to be prolific or have prolific results, you have to be specific. And specific questions can be the keys that can open specific doors to achievements and progress in your life and in your business. Uh, Francisco said, got your book in today. Awesome, man. Let me know what you think about it. Um, I'm super excited about this book. Like, I'm not an author. I don't write a ton of books. I wanted to do this because we don't offer anything low ticket. We don't offer anything that uh, for people who are young or for people who are getting started, or people that want to learn about the business, we don't really offer anything. And this book is absolutely free. So like if you guys have not gotten your copy of uh, the One Product Away book, like I spent a lot of time writing this book. There's no fluff. It's not a documentary or like a biography or like a fluff filled book. It's actually pretty much everything I know about the business, how I got started, how you can get started, recommendations for starting, how to scale. And the best part is it's free. Literally, I'm going to send you a physical copy to your address for free. And you're going to get instant access to the ebook version as well. You just got to cover shipping and handling, right? Which is pretty fair. So guys, go ahead and drop your questions down below. Let's turn up. Let's help you guys get to the next level. Lewis says he also got his book. Shout out to Lewis. What's going on, Lewis? Good to see you, man. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the book. Do me a favor and, and tag me in your stories. Let me know what you think about the book. Let me know what one of the favorite chapters or a gem that you learn or what's something that you enjoy about the book. I enjoy the constructive criticism as well as the feedback. Awesome. Cool. So it looks like we have a bunch of people joining again, guys, go ahead and drop your questions down below. Uh, what's the difference between Alibaba and AliExpress? So uh, good, qu good question, Francisco. So Alibaba is going to be more of a, um, business to business website directory where you can go and find manufacturers. So when it comes to private label, when it comes to creating a brand or uh, creating an online physical product business where you're ordering in bulk and sending the products to Amazon, you're going to go ahead and use Alibaba because you're going to get better rates because you're ordering in bulk. AliExpress is a subsidiary of Alibaba and AliExpress is more for drop shipping. So if you're using a different platform or different website, and your drop shipping products, you would then use AliExpress and you would integrate it with an e-commerce platform like Shopify. And then what happens is people are going to come buy the products and AliExpress is going to fulfill those products. So the difference between the two is like if you're doing the drop shipping method, um, you have to have a lot of traffic to bring um, to these products, right? Like if you're trying to drop ship a physical product that doesn't have notoriety, you have to drive a lot of traffic to that storefront. Otherwise, it's not going to make any money. Um, so that's like the main difference. Like when you're selling stuff on Amazon, you're not trying to sell the actual brand. You're selling the product and people are discovering the brand through the high search volume 
of people that are actually going um, on Amazon trying to find this product, right? So that's the big difference. Um, me personally, I like the private label approach and I like the Alibaba approach because you got to think about it. When there's barrier to entry, there's less people. And when there's less people, there's less competition. The barrier to entry when it comes to drop shipping and just a drop shipping website is very, very low because you can get started with just a website. You don't need to order any inventory. Therefore, it's just a lot of like, you know, cheesy products, low quality products. Um, it's not really there, right? The longevity isn't there. The sustainability isn't there. Again, that's my personal opinion. Oh, uh, cool. Let's see. Um, how long does it take for a store to launch with the done for you program? Um, so there's tons of variables, like there's different variables depending on the steps that you're in. Um, there's the, basically the, the main steps are going to be the preliminary research, the product research, the product development, the, um, manufacturer research, the manufacturer negotiation. Like we have a team overseas in, in China that go to these different factories. They negotiate on our clients' behalf, find good products, not only good products, but products at great rates. Um, and then we go into product development, we go into product manufacturing, and then you have product shipping. Once that is done and the, in, the product inventory gets to Amazon, then it's time to go ahead and start doing the keyword research, the listing optimization, the launch process, review process. So it's a robust, um, it's a robust uh, business and a robust method that we have, right? So it just determines where you are. But like, here's what I often say, because a lot of people are focused on the time frame. And here's the thing, whenever you're focused on time frames, usually you make decisions in a rushed manner because you want a result quick because your primary focus is time. And when you do that, you make the wrong decision. Because if I was to tell you, would you rather have your business started in three months and make X amount of money or three years and make 300 times the amount of money, you're going to say three years. The problem is people want things fast. They want things now because of the, what we're accustomed to in society and the problem is when you rush things, you get rushed results. So it's tricky. And I often tell people that's why like in our whole world in AMZ formula and my programs and our coaching and our consulting with our clients, we try to work on the mindset and just setting realistic expectations. Um, in today's society, we all want results fast. It's called instant gratification. When we're bored, we're all, we can get on a mobile device, hop on Instagram, hop on Facebook, hop on YouTube, and within seconds, have dopamine and serotonin released to our brain and feel satisfied, right? If you're hungry and you don't have time to prepare a real meal and cook a real meal, you can literally go to a fast food joint or you can pop something in the microwave or the oven and have food within 10 minutes. So in today's society, we're accustomed to what's called instant gratification. And like, here's the, the truth and the fact of the matter. Things that last long time and things that are worth actually having and, and creating take a lot of effort, take a lot of time, right? So like the people that want like fast cash and they don't care about longevity, this isn't really the business model. And I often tell people that straight up. Um, I have four products in four totally different niches and they all have different brand logos. Do you see that as an issue? Uh, no, not at all. So there's no right or wrong way when it comes to developing a brand or developing out, um, I would just say, I guess your net worth within the brands, right? Because that's ultimately is the goal is to build these brands, have these brands cash flow and then one day sell them, right? So when you're looking at that, there's different strategies. And not like they each have their own pro, they each have their own con. Their own con. So you have horizontal integration, and you have vertical integration. So vertical integration would be launching one specific brand and then vertically integrating different semantically relevant SKUs or um, products that are categorically similar and vertically integrating. For instance, Apple has computers, iPads, phones, earbuds, right? And then of course, charging accessories. So that's vertical integration. Horizontal integration would be um, if you were to create different products in different categories under an umbrella or a holding company or a portfolio, right? So I talk about this in the AMZ formula and in our programs, basically um, branding and then generic um, uh, portfolio building. There's no right or wrong answer both work. I know people have made a ton of money with both of them. However, you just have to identify what is your goal um, and what works best for you, right? Um, I'm struggling with PPC. It's a lot to learn. What's the best way to go about learning PPC? 
Um, so PPC is difficult, and here's the thing. PPC is advancing. So if you look at the share, like if you're studying Amazon and what Jeff Bezos is doing and what Amazon's doing is the reason why um, – new sellers and sellers are able to have so much success on Amazon. And he actually, Jeff Bezos actually stated this in his 2021 and 2022 letter to shareholders is the reason why um, clients are able to have so much success on Amazon's platform is because Amazon is spending so much money to develop, integrate and increase the quality as well as the effectiveness of the tools and the platform itself. So over the last like, half a decade, two thirds of a decade since when I got started with Amazon and where Amazon is now, the biggest thing they've been prioritizing and focusing on is actually the um, tools and the advertising within their infrastructure. So it's constantly updating, it's constantly upgrading, there's constantly new tools, new beta programs being um, introduced and added. So it is like a huge benefit to be able to invest in some type of knowledge, become a part of some type of community, where there's PPC education that's constantly being updated, where there's some type of person who is like walking you through with PPC and answering questions like perfect example within our max and inner circle programs within AMZ formal and AMZ together, we have a PPC coach that gets on monthly calls and helps our clients problem solve with PPC, answer questions on PPC, keeps you updated. Also, because of the volume of clients that we have in our own personal accounts, we have an Amazon rep where we get updated on Amazon T TOS or terms of service. Because one thing that like my constructive criticism is like Amazon is not, and they don't have to be, but Amazon, in my personal opinion, is not direct to their clients enough with terms of service updates because it can be detrimental to your business. If they roll out a terms of service upgrade or a terms of service update and you're not compliant with it, it can cause you issues, right? And they like in their response, it's basically like they expect you to be looking at the terms of service and be up to date with the terms of service and be understanding what's going on in their community. So first recommendation is to be on top of Amazon's terms of service. Set up Google Alerts. You can go to Google and type in Google Alert, set up a Google Alert and put in quotations, Amazon terms of service, PPC updates, Amazon seller updates, Amazon news. You as a seller or someone who's interested in the business should be doing your due diligence and should be, um, um, should be getting access to all of these information and updates, right? So setting these Google alerts, what's going to happen is you're going to get an email directly to show these Google alerts on all your search queries. So I would definitely set those up. Another thing is I would definitely bookmark on your desktop or laptop Amazon's terms of service. And I would be periodically checking it because what they will do is they will timestamp the last time there was an update or a rollover to their terms of service. That way you can tell if you're up to date and not. And if you're not up to date, you can see what the adjustments and the changes were. Second of all, I would just do your research. And not only just with PPC, but with anything, there's only two ways that you can learn something, right? And this is from my, my personal experience across the industry and in different businesses. There's two ways to effectively learn something, only two. Um, number one is through time, trial and error and effort on your own behalf or the time, trial and error and effort on the behalf of someone else. So one of my mentors, Myron Golden, he says that he has a philosophy that success, um, um, success has a need for speed. So when it comes to becoming successful or learning a skill set or learning something that you want to learn, you can control how fast you can get there. So usually there's a saying, people who have money don't have time and people who have time don't have money. So if you have resources, resources, money, credit, all of these things were given to us as a tool to become resourceful. So if we want to get there faster, if we want to learn the skill set faster, if we want to get success faster, the way we can get there is by buying time, effort, energy, and the expenses that it would take for us to learn something. Perfect example outside of the Amazon space. If I wanted to become a mechanic and I wanted to become mechanically inclined, there's two ways I can do this. I can go to mechanic school or hire a mechanic to teach me, which it's safe to say I would get, I would learn faster than buying mechanic books and uh, getting the wrench set out and the tool set out and getting under the hood and problem solving myself, right? So you have to ask yourself, what's good for you? What is your budget? How fast do you want to get there? How hands-on do you want to be? But those are just a few suggestions. First and foremost, regardless of where you are, 
Make sure you're setting up the Google Alerts. Make sure you're bookmarking the Amazon Terms of Service. Make sure that you're on top of that and that you understand it like the law of the land, right? The law of the land is if you shoplift, you're going to jail. If you speed, you're getting a ticket. Well, what is the law of the land if there's an intellectual infringement on, on, um, on intellectual property? What happens? What happens if you sell a product that you're not supposed to sell on Amazon? What happens? What products are you supposed to sell on Amazon? I know all of these answers, but if you're not familiar with the law of the land when it comes to selling on Amazon, familiarize yourself with it. One of the biggest mistakes are people who are not familiar with terms of service. They launch a product, it gets suppressed. They launch a product, they get their account shut down. They go with somebody and make an investment because they're promising fast money, fast, quick, easy money, but this company is not operating within Amazon's terms of service. For instance, our AMZ Together program, yes, it's not the fastest. I will tell you straight up, it is not the fastest in the industry, but I can tell you it has the highest success rate. And when I mean success rate, I mean life expectancy rate. We've never had an account shut down. A lot of the people in the automation or in the Amazon industry who sell services, yes, they can get you fast results, but how long will the results last? So for me, it's all about longevity. It's all about sustainability. And we stay within Amazon's terms of service. That's how our brands have existed. Our personal brands have existed over half a decade and why we have such a high success rate. So you want to familiarize yourself with this stuff. You want to understand this stuff. Um, resources that we offer, again, inside Max and Inner Circle, we offer PPC coaching. And even something that we offer for our clients is something new we just rolled out is now we offer um, PPC done for clients, right? Or PPC management for clients. So there's no website. We don't sell that service. Like if you want to learn more information about that, email support at the amzformula.com subject line PPC management and just talk about your brands. Um, talk about a little bit about where, give us some context, where you are, how many SKUs do you have, how long have it been live, how much inventory do you have, and then somebody from our team can reach out and talk to you about that, right? But rather you want to do the due diligence, learn how to do it yourself, or you want to have experts take the wheel for you. Um, my bad, they, they all have, uh, my bad, they all have the same brand name. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So, if you have a conglomerate of products that are under one brand, um, th there's no difference. Like you could have a hundred products, a hundred different brands. You could have one brand, a hundred different products. There's just different goals. So you just have to ask yourself, like, what is the strategy? For instance, like if I had partners, if I was taking in liquid partners, or I was taking in equity partners and I wanted to launch different brands, I would do different brands, different SKUs. If I was doing everything myself and I was just focused on, building a large brand, right? And I would have one brand different SKU. So there's no right or wrong, no rhyme or reason. You just have to focus on what's best for you and what it is exactly that you're trying. What is the desired outcome, right? Um, do you think the recession will affect my Amazon business? So, and again, this sounds like it's very biased coming from me because I'm the Amazon guy, but this is my God honest, like truthful opinion, my personal opinion. I think that when it comes to recession-proof businesses or businesses that can sustain and withstand a recession, a depression, or any type of pandemic or economic downturn, I think one of the best businesses that you can have is an online Amazon business. Here's why. And notice I didn't say e-commerce business. I said online Amazon business. Um, and there's data to support this, right? When there's a recession, when there's a depression, it will not affect supply and demand. For instance, and I always try to give you guys examples outside of Amazon because it sounds super biased. Like, yeah, of course, he's, everything sounds sweet because he's an Amazon guy, right? Well, I have 56 apartments, C-class, low-income apartments. The reason why I invest in those is because that's another, in my personal opinion, recession-proof business model. Because in a recession, when people downsize, in a depression, when people downsize, in a pandemic, when people's hours get cut, the C-class, lower class, affordable housing is going to be where a majority of people are going to be at because it's a supply and demand. People need to have a roof over their head. But when it comes to e-commerce, when it comes to Amazon specific, Amazon is one of the only companies in the world that can get products to people's doorsteps same day or next day, within two days, within 48 hours. So I don't think that supply and demand is ever going to go away. And the products we're selling, people need. In fact, when the pandemic happened, like, and I feel weird saying this, I, I, don't, I, don't, I almost like hate saying this, but 
when the pandemic happened, when this coronavirus thing happened, people who were selling on Amazon were making more money than they've ever made. A lot of people became millionaires during this pandemic because the increase and in influx of people who were shopping online because they couldn't shop tr in traditional retail, in physical retail, or they were scared to, was through the roof. In fact, you can look this up. Amazon stopped all non-necessity uh, non or non-necessary um, um, product um, inventory coming in for two to three weeks. And sellers were freaking out because sellers were making so much money. And then Amazon was like, hey, we're holding all incoming inventory unless it's a necessity item. What's a necessity item? Like um, personal products, hygiene products, toilet paper, um, like um, Advil, stuff like that, right? There was so much demand on Amazon that Amazon had to say, hey, like if you're selling like toys, we need to chill out for a couple of weeks so we can get more of this because too many people are relying on Amazon for this infrastructure. So again, my personal opinion is I believe that it's one of the best recession-proof business models. Um, and I personally believe that a recession, a depression, or any pandemic or virus that happens in the near future will not slow down the business, right? Um, that's my personal opinion. I could be completely wrong, but I do believe that. And through the last seven years that I've been in the industry, like we are in a recession. I believe we are in a recession. You can look at the money markets. You can look at the news. You can look at the inflationary rates. You can just look at the data and the economics. They will support like things right now are difficult, yet people are still crushing it on Amazon. Um, even though it's an Amazon business, I hate talking about Amazon business. I always refer to the business of supply and demand. When you look back BC, which is before Christ, there was always blacksmiths. There was always trades. There were always stands where people would take goods and exchange them for something of need, right? Something of value, they would exchange it for something of need. That business model has always existed and it's not going anywhere. The only thing that's changed is Amazon came in and made this efficient and effective. There's no longer a need to have to go to these physical retail stores and physical retail stores cannot sustain because of the, the level of exposure and overhead, there's no insurance, there's no utilities, there's no 401ks, there's no additional employees. Everything is being automated and segregated. That way it's more efficient and effective. And that's just where we are. Um, I can't remember where I learned this at, but I remember um, in, maybe in the mastermind or a program that I'm in, but they were talking about how the most successful people in the world were all innovators and a part of innovation is creation and adaption. Creation and adaption. What was working 100 years ago is not working today. What was working two decades ago is not working today and will not work two, day, two decades from today. So as an entrepreneur, as an investor, as a business owner, you have to create, innovate, and adapt. What is working right now? Let me exhaust this. What is going to work in the future? What is starting to work that's no longer working? And let's adapt and let's shift. The people who identified retail was dying and came online, was able to crush it. I remember distinctively my mentor talking, like in the first business I was in and the, the line of products I sold, my mentor sold to people who then resold. He was a wholesaler. He was a manufacturer. And he would be on the phone telling people, stop getting retail locations, figure out how to sell one too many with less touch points, less, uh, less touch points, higher frequency. That was all he con was concerned about within his business and telling other people is how can we have less touch points, more frequency? What does that mean? How can I be more effective, more efficient, and have higher margins while selling more product? That's how I got started with Amazon because I would hear him telling these people this. Nobody was doing it because they did what everybody else was doing, which was taking these products and selling them in physical retail. Then they would all fail. So if you want results that others are not getting, you must do what others are not doing. Uh, Peter Thiel, the co-founder of PayPal, when interviewed why PayPal was like so successful and how they grew to be so successful so fast, they said something that will stick with me forever. And I, I used to have this in my office at my warehouse. And he said that um, focus on escaping the competition and dominating the sector. So how can you escape the, dom the competition? If you escape the competition, there is no competition. How do you dominate the sector? Um, Tesla escaped the competition when it comes to vehicles and they dominated the sector within electronic or rechargeable vehicles. Perfect example. And again, uh, Peter Thiel, um, um, what's the founder of Tesla? Elon Musk was a part of uh, PayPal with um, Peter Thiel 
and he did the same thing. What was done with PayPal, they did with Tesla. So success leaves clues and don't reinvent the wheel. Just take what has worked and continue to do that. And it, it'll work, right? Because if it works, it'll continue to work in any sector, in any business. Um, great questions, guys. Can you talk a little bit about um, what you get with the AMZ formula? I'm thinking about getting started. I spoke to Marcel today. And what is PPC? Okay, cool. So um, three questions, and I'll start with the first one. So the AMZ formula, everybody sees the branding, the AMZ formula. It's one of the oldest educational platforms and curriculums when it comes to private label, which is physical brands, um, creating a physical brand and selling them primarily on Amazon. So you may have heard AMZ together and you may have heard AMZ formula. So AMZ formula is the curriculum that I developed. And the, the way I came up with the name formula is because um, when I used to watch cartoons and you would see like in the Flintstones or like in the Jetsons, if they were putting a scientific formula together, they were creating a concoction. If they messed it up, it would explode in their face. So when I was getting started and I didn't have money for coaching and I was doing this thing myself, because remember, you can only learn two ways. You pay someone or you pay with your time, your effort and your energy. When I was figuring this thing out, I kept making mistakes and I was documenting it. And I created this formula that worked for me, right? My first several products failed. The, the following one made us a million dollars, changed my whole life. The whole story is inside the One Product Away book. And if you guys watch the channel, listen to the podcast, you guys know this. So that's how I came up with the name, the formula. The AMZ formula is the curriculum. It's everything inside of here, all my lessons, all of my frameworks, all of my strategies, all of my PDFs, all of the documents that like our lawyers have created and that our team has created. It's everything from start to finish. AMZ together are different programs that we offer, right? The majority of our programs have the AMZ formula curriculum um, as a part of it. But what I noticed, because I only offered the AMZ formula for many years, we've had thousands and thousands of people go through the AMZ formula and absolutely crush it, right? We've helped clients in 100 plus countries um, in even different languages with my program. But what I noticed is we weren't serving people at the highest level. So I'm constantly within the program trying to identify how can we serve people and how can we help people. And one of the things that I noticed that my mentor helped me see um, is that we were selling Honda Civics to the mass. So if you wanted to buy a Rolls Royce and you went to a dealership and they were only selling you a Honda Civic, but there was no other options, you would buy the Honda Civic, but you would not get the Rolls Royce, right? You would not get that level of quality or that level of attention or whatever it is that you're seeking. So the mistake that I made is because I wasn't a digital marketer. My background in marketing was in SEO and in actual product development and marketing when it comes to physical products. I didn't know this whole course stuff. So I learned through the years of joining mentorships, so on and so forth, that there's different levels of programs. So then we created Max. So the AMZ formula is just the program. My Max program is the AMZ formula plus coaching and a higher level of attention. So you have prioritized support and you have several different coaches that you get. You get a coach on PPC. You get a coach on general questions. You get a coach on advanced strategies and product research because what was happening is it, I just had one program for everybody and I would hop on calls and answer the same redundant questions. So it's how do we increase our results for our clients and how do we serve them? So Max was born, right? Um, then the inner circle is the AMZ formula plus Max, plus you unlock additional coaching and mentorship with myself. Now, when you go into the AMZ Together program, you have people who believe in the business model, who believe in a physical product business, who want an online business created for them. They want to diversify their income. They want something that's going to generate income 24-7, 365 for them, but they don't want to learn the business. We, that's when we developed the AMZ Together Done For You program where our team finds you the product, finds you the manufacturer. Our team in China goes and negotiates on your behalf and actually um, um, develops the product, negotiates on your behalf, helps with the importing of the actual product, creating the listing, selling it, and then our internal team and our partners manage the PPC, which is the marketing. Now, the last question that you had is what is PPC? PPC is an acronym that stands for pay per click. So without going like super nerd on you guys and making it understandable, there's two ways that you can get a sale on any type of search engine, right? And Amazon is just a search engine. It's an e-commerce based search engine. There's two ways. There's organically, and then there is paying for that uh, purchase or PPC, right? 
So in order to have organic sales, you have to rank organically, which means you have to be visible within the search engine. When you create a brand, let's say I create a product, I have a product, I create a brand and I sell it on Amazon, it's going to be crickets. I'm not going to get any sales. Why? Because there's no depth of market. There's no brand notoriety. It means nobody knows you. There's no depth of your business, depth of your product, and nobody can find you. Well, you can have Salt Bay or Nooser in the middle of the desert, but if there's no traction or no traffic, no one will ever see the restaurant, even though it's one of the best steak restaurants that exists, right? So look at the restaurant. Their restaurants are in Dubai, high traffic, Miami, high traffic, and in different high traffic areas where people will drive past them and see them. That's organic traffic. Then you have paid traffic. Paid traffic is when you run ads or you spend money for visibility. So when we're starting out, we want to, unless you're a pre-existing business that has digital assets like email lists, text lists, following across different social medias, pre-existing customer base, so on and so forth, what you need to do is you need to pay for ads to show your product in front of people who are searching for your product. Now, a few things happens when we do this. Number one, you're able to increase your ranking, which increases your visibility or how you're able to be found within the search results, which will increase your organic sales. Organic sales means you get sales without paying. That's the most profitable sales and that's what we all want. However, you have to pay to play, right? Unless you're a pre-existing business with those things I mentioned, you have to pay to get in front of your customers. Once you get in front of your customers, a few things are going to happen. You're going to get more reviews, which will help your conversions or sales. Number two, you're going to get more depth of market. People are going to start to know, like, and trust your brand. And number three, which is the most important, you're going to start to feed the Amazon's algorithm, which their current algorithm um, is called the A10 algorithm. Nobody knows, no geek, no SEO guy, nobody knows all of the factors to the algorithm and ranking. But what we've developed and what we've identified over the years is one of the most important factors is your CTR or click-through rate to conversion. Now, there's two components. There's an internal CTR to conversion and an external CTR to conversion. Internal would be a PPC within Amazon going to your listing and then somebody buying your product. That gets you one point. And I'm just throwing this so you guys can understand one point. But what gets you two points is an external CTR to conversion or external click to purchase. An external click to purchase would just be you spending money, time, effort, or energy outside of Amazon to bring people onto Amazon to buy your product. So example one, internal, would be running PPC within Amazon and telling Amazon, I want to pay you to show my lent roller in front of people who are typing every single day for lent rollers. That's an internal. External would be me going to daily needs page or daily wants page or necessity daily needs on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram where somebody just creates content, an influencer creates content around these things and I pay them to show my travel size lint roller. So I'm paying them. I'm saying exclusively on Amazon, go there for a discount. Then they go to Amazon. Amazon is able to track that external traffic came onto their platform and then bought your product. And they know that there's one of two ways that that happened. Number one, you paid for it or number two, you created some type of asset that can produce that traffic. Therefore, Amazon rewards you more. So there's different levels of traffic. There's traffic that you can control, traffic that you can buy, and traffic that you can rent. So traffic that you can control is traffic that you own the intellectual property to. Facebook groups, incubator groups, social media platforms, email lists. Traffic that you can control, or excuse me, traffic that you can um, um, buy is paid media. Right, So if you go and run a Facebook ad, you go and run PPC. And then the third type of traffic is um, traffic that you can, uh, excuse me, traffic that you can rent is PPC. And traffic that you can buy is when you go and you do a JV deal with an influencer. Or you go and you pay for a piece of content to be produced where it's always going to exist, but it's going to drive you traffic. For instance, if I go to a blog on, um, uh, if I go to a blog that specializes on traveling and they do an article, 10 must-have travel size goods that you need for your next trip. And then I pay them for a placement to put my travel size lint roller in there. And that piece of content inside of that blog never like goes away and it lives forever. That is traffic that I bought. Traffic that you rent is PPC because if you stop paying for PPC, you stop getting results. And traffic that you control is when you build the intellectual property and you can control it. You own the Facebook group. You own the email list. 
So those are three different types of traffic. And that's a little bit about PPC and a little bit about what we offer in our world in AMZ Together and AMZ Formula. Whew, that was a lot. Yeah, do you see where that water went? Cool. Uh, let's keep rolling. Fantastic question. Also, Marcel's here somewhere. We're at my studio right now. Marcel's been a part of my inner circle for, God, years. Fantastic guy, by the way. Um, how much investment would you recommend for those who are ready to start with AMZ? So, um, I guess like other than, other than whatever investment it is for program coaching or teaching or whatever that is, let's set that off to the side for a minute. When it comes to the actual business, there's only a few expenses that you need and it never really changes. You have your COG or your cost of goods. And again, guys, note takers and money makers don't rely on your memory because as my mentor told me, a sharp pencil is better than a sharp mind. It does not matter how good your memory is. You will never remember all of this. And if you don't remember it, you can't execute on it. And um, um, information changes situations only through implementation. So if you don't remember it, you can't execute. If you can't execute, you can't implement. If you don't implement, it won't affect your situation. So the goal is to take this stuff run with it as fast as possible because success loves speed and be able to get a tangible monetizable result as a result of us spending time together. Right? So make sure you're taking notes. So, um, when it comes to that, um, you have your COG, which is cost of good. Then you have your COGS. When you combine shipping and logistics with the cost of your product, you have COGS cost of good shipped. So that's your product cost, your shipping cost. Then you have your FBA cost. Now, FBA cost, and you can go to freefbacalculator.com or amazonfbacalculator.com, and you'll see it in Google results. It's a free tool that you can use within Seller Central to identify what your estimated FBA fee is. FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. This is Amazon's cut for handling all of the above. Number one, facilitation of your actual product. Amazon is going to receive your inventory they're going to store and facilitate your inventory. They're then going to package using their own materials, their own boxes, their own tape, their own labels, their own labor. And then they're going to ship it to your clients who buy your products on Amazon.com using their own shipping connection. By the way, they have the largest uh, connection with UPS in the world. No other company can match UPS's um, rates with Amazon. Um, and we cross reference this. Back when uh, me and my partner had a huge warehouse, we get great rates because my partner was spending millions of dollars with UPS. And when we cross analysis, uh, did a cross analysis on UPS's rates through Amazon and our rates, it was like still double and we still had amazing rates, right? So you get those rates, storing your product, packing your product, shipping your product, and then any type of uh, receivables or returns, all of that is baked into your FBA fee. Now, the last one is going to be your advertising. And write this down. You have ACOS. When it comes to advertising, there's two acronyms. Like I know you can go real like we can go real nerd on the advertising stuff and I want to make success simple because I'm not that smart. I have a high school diploma. No, I don't have a high school diploma. I lied. I have a ninth grade education, no college de uh, degree. So I'm all about making success simple. You have two acronyms that you want to write down when it comes to advertising. You have ACOS, percentage, and you have ROAS, right? ROAS. So ACOS is going to be your average cost of sale. This is the acquisition cost. And then number two is going to be RO, uh, ROAS, which is ROAS, which is going to be return on ad spend. Let's start with ACOS. If this is my product, again, because it's in front of me, this product costs a dollar to make, a dollar to ship, and then a dollar for FBA fees, right? My all-in cost is $3. If I sell this product for $10, right? If I sell this product for $10, my profit margin is 70%. I'm just using round numbers here so it's easy to digest. If my profit margin is my net profit margin is 70%, I can spend up to 70% on my ACOS percentage to break even. That means my cost per acquisition can be at 70% to break even. Now, if my ACOS percentage goes to 75, I'm in a 5% deficit. So that's the easiest way to understand profitability through marketing when it comes to the ACOS percentage. Next, we have ROAS, which is return on ad spend. If I spend $100 and I make $100, my ROAS or ROAS is one. 
If I spend $100 and make $300, my ROAS or return on ad spend is three. The higher the ROAS, the higher the multiplier on profitability. The lower the A cost to your profit margin, that equation, the higher your profit, true net profit margin. Net profit margin is pre-ad spend, true net or TCOS, which is total cost of ad spend or total cost of sales, is going to be when we put PPC or ad spend in. The lower that percentage is when you do that, multi, uh, when you do that subtraction, the higher your profit margin. So the goal is to have the lowest A cost, and the goal is to have the highest return on ad spend or ROAS. Um, so that's the goals. When it comes to launching a product on Amazon, you can have the most, you can have the best listing, you can have the best pictures, you can have the best product, you can have the best packaging. But if you're a five-star resort in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle, no one is going to ever find you, right? So think about it like that. And that's how we can justify this, right? <clears throat> when it comes to McDonald's, most people think McDonald's is a fast food restaurant. McDonald's net worth, McDonald's value comes to their real estate. McDonald's locations are in the most prestigious location, high volume locations, and the actual real estate that McDonald's owns as a corporation is more valuable than the McDonald's corporation itself. Why? Because you want to pay for visibility because visibility leads to traction. Traction leads to profitability. So you can have the best everything, but if nobody's seeing your product, you're not going to make any sales. That's oftentimes when people reach out and they say, Josh, I followed everything. I'm not making any sales. I ask them, what does their marketing look like? When it comes to why you're not making sales, um, I often say all products sell. The, prob the, the, the million dollar question is, is it selling enough? Is it selling to what your due diligence was? And if it's not, let's figure it out through a process of elimination. If your car's not working and you take it to a mechanic shop, they're going to start with the process of elimination. If you, if you are sick or you don't feel well and you don't know why and you go to the doctor, they're going to start with the process of elimination. So within the business, we have to reverse engineer and identify what the issue is so we can rectify it to get the desired result. In order to do so, we have to go through a process of elimination. How does the title? How is the price? How are the images? How is the description? How is the bullet points? How is the keyword density? How is the SEO? What are the customers? Uh, what 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 is the marketplace wanting? What are the reviews? Um, how is our PPC? Are we spending PPC? How many reviews do we have? We have to look at all of these things, and all of these things have to be checked and have to be functioning, right? Um, in order for your car to start, your battery has to be juiced. You have to have the good alternator. You have to have a good starter, right? And you have to have gas. These are four quick variables to starting a vehicle. To starting a profitable brand or a profitable business on Amazon, you have to have a good product. You have to have good packaging. You have to have reviews. You have to have a good marketing strategy. You have to run PPC. These are all of the components that are necessary, mandatory in order to get traction. And remember, traction breeds results or profitability. Um, also, how long... Um, how long before one would see that investment back. Give me a, uh, um, I'm, I'm assuming an estimate, give you an estimate. So when we're looking at profitability, um, I, I refer to this as the freedom formula. So all products are different. There's multiple different variables. So I can't give you a one size fits all, but I can explain to you how to reverse engineer this yourself. So when you're finding a product or launching a product, you can come up with a thesis as to when you will get your ROI or return on investment. So let's say you invest $10,000 into the business and um, you have 1,000 units, right? If you're projecting to make $3 per unit, you're making $3,000 net profit per sell through of your inventory. That means you would need 3.5 orderings of your inventory at 1,000 order rates in order to make that $10,000, which means your ROI is one. It's canceled out. It's even. So in order to do this, you need to identify what is your cost of goods, what is your cost of goods shipped, or what is your cost to make and produce your product, what is the cost to ship your product. Those two come together. It's C-G-O-S, cost of goods shipped. Once you have your cost of goods shipped, what is your fulfillment fee? Okay? You add those two line items, and then you look at your advertising. How much are you spending? This will fluctuate and adjust. You add those three things together, and you can identify what your all-in cost is, monthly or your all upfront total cost is. 
Once you identify that, you look at your anticipated sales. What is your due diligence? Well, if the competition is selling 10 units per day, that's 300 units per month, and I'm doing X, Y, and Z to at least meet them there and then hopefully surpass them, if I'm selling X amount of units at X amount of profit, what does that math look like? What is the unit amount by the amount of units sold by the profit and then subtract the profit from what is invested and you can come up with a time frame and a dollar amount that you need to break even as well as projections and future projections for profitability. Awesome. Um, what else we got, E? Yeah, where, where's the time at on this? 40, yeah, we're 15 minutes. We really got to change the name of this. This is 30 Minutes with a Millionaire. I don't think we have one 30-minute episode. So this is what we want to do. If you guys are getting value, if you guys are enjoying this, because I do this for free. In fact, um, running this channel, having this level of production, having the staff do this, plus my time, like this cost me over six figures per year. No one else on YouTube is doing this to this level of detail and this level of effort. Um, all I ask you guys is subscribe to the channel, click the bell, um, share the channel with other people who want to increase their income, impact, and influence. Comment on the videos, share these to your stories. Like all of the above is free, costs you no money, and you can do so very, very easily. That's all I ask. Our number one goal is to help you guys increase your income, impact, and influence. And it's all about um, it's all about the passion, not the profit, with this whole project, right? Because there's a lot of things. Like my ads run 24-7, 365 without me doing anything. So I don't really need to do this and I don't sell anything during these other than telling you guys, like you guys really should grab this book because it's free. Um, other than that, like I don't do, I don't try to sell you guys anything. So at least subscribe, turn notifications on, share the channel, help us grow. We are going to cross 400 videos in the private label sector my videos, I generally try to give you guys content for free that is better than most paid content. That is my number one transparent goal with this channel. And I feel that I've done so and I've challenged the community to tag a channel that has more better content than me, that has more videos than me when it comes to private label. And no one has done it yet. Our team constantly reviews all the other channels in the sector. We are the largest private label focus, no BS, no fluff channel in the industry. I mean, we spend tens of thousands of dollars just for the seven-figure product series where we review million-dollar products and tell you exactly how they launched a million-dollar brand, how they're making all of this money, and how you can go out and do the same thing. So if you choose to work with us or not, if you just follow all the free stuff here, it's the best stuff on the internet. So please subscribe, like this video, share it with people. That would mean the world to us, and it really helps the channel out phenomenally. Um, how do you strategize a brand? So I think strategizing a brand is sometimes overlooked and that people like fall victim to analysis paralysis. Unless you're Kanye or Rihanna or you're the Kardashians, you don't have to be strategic with your brand. You have to be strategic with your product and you have to be strategic with your marketing. I often say this first to market, first to dollar, and people don't buy the quality of your packaging. They buy the actual product, the problem that it solves, and how it can benefit them. Too many people focus on the emotional aspect of their brand. It has to look perfect. I have to approve of it. I have to love it. Those three things are all emotional, and guess what? Your heart and your pocketbook or your heart and your wallet are very far from one another. So if you are leading with emotion and not with data, chances are you're not going to make the amount of money that you want to make. So separate your emotion and make data-driven decisions when it comes to launching or creating your brand. So simply my thought process when I'm looking at a brand, I don't care about colors. I don't care about slogans. I don't care about any of that. I care about the product and I care about a few things. Number one, and these are, this is just me brainstorming aloud. They don't have to be all of these or a combination of these, but these are questions I'm asking myself. Is it going to be a replenishable, high-frequency used product? You use this when it's gone, you need this tape. You use toilet paper when it's gone, you need more toilet paper. Is it that type of product? If so, what is the best marketing to this? Number two, if it's a problem-solving based product, the bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. Naveen James, I've had the pleasure of watching him speak multiple times. He's a multi-billionaire. He's dirt poor from India, grew up on dirt floors, had no shoes. Shoes were a luxury in his country. And when asked, how do you become a billionaire? He does not talk to you about his 
company. He talks to you about his process. If you will spend all your time identifying the world's biggest problem, you will be one of the world's greatest valued persons, right? When it comes to Jeff Bezos, why is Amazon so successful? Why is Jeff Bezos one of the richest people alive? Because Amazon was a serious problem. People do not want to go to the store and waste time, effort, and energy, gas, wait in line, and do all these inefficiencies in order to get things that can get delivered to them at a better cost, quicker, and more efficiently. Why is Elon Musk one of the most successful people and one of the richest people in the world? Because he solved a problem. He created a luxury vehicle that does not require gas. That is a significant problem. If you, could, if you had the knowledge or the know-how to create an antidote for cancer, you would be the world's wealthiest person and no one would ever cross your, your wealth because this is a drastic problem. So Naveen James talks about the process, not the product, and you need to spend time on a product that can solve a problem if that's the strategy. So you have replenishable, needed, replaceable products, then you have problem-solving products. So I'm looking at products I'm looking at problems, I'm looking at frequency, I'm looking at scalability, I'm looking at EBITDA evaluations. Um, what is an EBITDA evaluation? Earning before interest, taxes, appreciation, depreciation. When I sell this business, how much money can I make? Different businesses have different EBITDA evaluations. If you don't know what EBITDA is, Google it and identify it because I learned this from my friend tour, Alex Hermosi. You have to start a business how you would end your business. If we all started our life how we would like to end our life, how would you like to see your life on your deathbed? If you started at an early age, reverse engineering that and working towards that, you would be the most, you would be the perfect version of yourself. And true happiness comes from you becoming the best version of yourself. And in order to do that, you must reverse engineer. So reverse engineer the exit of your company. Understand the EBITDA evaluation and how you can get the most on the exit. Understand the cross-pollination and promotion of these products, as well as the vertical integration and horizontal, ver uh, horizontal, horizontal um, integration of the product SKUs. These are things that you need to do, right? When you think of Apple, you think of phone. You do not think of computer. They started with computer. Also... Something that I like to do that I guess I don't talk about enough is look at the mission statements of some of your favorite companies, right? One of our coaches, uh, me and my wife's relationship coaches had me do this and I already knew this, but I haven't done this in a while. Go look at the mission statements of some of the most successful businesses that you are a consumer of, that you believe in and that you support. And you will notice that nine times out of 10, it's not around a product. It's around a mission or it's around a problem, right? So that was Steve Jobs' whole thing is how do I offer technology that will increase the efficiencies and the effectiveness of the humans who use them? That's it. They don't give a damn about a phone or a computer or earbuds. How can I increase the, the, increase the effectiveness and the efficiency of the human who is operating the component? That's all he cared about. Amazon is how can I efficiently get something that is a demand of a consumer to them faster and more, more inexpensive than anybody else on the planet? That is all they focus on. So what is your mission statement? What is the EBITDA multipliers? Is it needed? Is it mandatory? These are things I'm thinking about. I could care less. When I launched my product, like, and I'm going through the archives actually because I'm going to launch two brands and I'm going to document them going from $0 in sales to a $1 million in sales. Because I took like the last year and I was pretty much retired, but um, I feel that I want to do this because it'll help the community. And I want to show you guys that this is still possible. It's going to continue to be possible so you cannot teach what you do not know, and you cannot lead where you will not go. So I'm going to do this with you guys. I've done this before multiple times, but I'm going to show you guys I can do it over and over and over again, even if I take years off. And I'm going to, I, I'm going to prove to you guys that I know this because I've done it. Therefore, if you just take this stuff and apply it, it will work, right? Um, but you have to look at that stuff, and you have to implement it. And that's the stuff I'm looking at. In the early adoption of my products and my brands, the packaging sucked. The logo sucked. I didn't trademark them right away. I didn't have a marketing plan right away. I looked at how can I scale these at a high number. And my mistake, which I just shared with you guys, hopefully you took that and wrote that down and ran with it is, and I was just telling um, E who runs our production this earlier, my biggest mistake was not starting my businesses how I would end them. I built cash flowing businesses to millions and millions of dollars, eight figures, and I never had an exit strategy. If I would have had an exit strategy on all the brands that I've built to multi-million dollar brands, I'd be worth probably a quarter of a billion dollars right now. Without a shadow of doubt, without a doubt in my mind, I'd be worth over a hundred million dollars. 
the people who I know who are close to me that are worth nine figures, who are generating multiple eight figures, are all through exits and increase in equity through partnerships or their own branding. That was my mistake. So learn from my mistakes because there's two ways that you learn. You learn through your own mistakes or you learn through the mistakes of others. I just shared one with you that took me a 10 years to figure out and literally cost me $100, $150 million. So learn from my mistakes. And that's why I do these. Because if you skip those potholes, you skip those mistakes, you hop over those hurdles, you can efficiently and more effectively become successful. When I say increase your income, your impact, and your influence, that's the mission statement of the channel and of my brand, right? So the way I believe I can help you guys do that is by telling you all the mistakes that I've made and all the ways that I've made a ton of money. So when I talk, guys, I don't care about influence, being an influencer. I don't care about my brand. I was rich far before this. I care about helping other people in my community who follow me, who believe in me, and who trust my company do what I've been able to do. I'm far from perfect, but that's our honest mission statement within our company and what my, what my goals are. Uh, do you have any uh, – I'm sorry, did I, did I skip one, man? Uh, good to see you, brother. What's up, Brian? Thanks for sending over the link to the podcast. Lots of great information, motivation for a blueprint to success. Great material, only one product away. Yeah, so one thing that we're going to start kicking into gear last quarter of this year and first quarter of next year is my podcast, From Nothing to Something. So if you love more of the business, more of the personal development, and you like short, bite-sized, quick, like straight to the point, dissectable, implementable uh, information, Go to all podcast platforms and search, pardon me, from, uh, from nothing to something. And that podcast, they're all under five minutes. Like I don't interview people. I don't ramble for an hour. Like I don't do that. I mean, those podcasts are cool, but it's like, dude, I'm getting in there. Do this to make a bunch of money. Do this to avoid pain. Do this not to mess up at life. This is my mistake. Don't do this. That's how that podcast is. So if you love that type of stuff, check out from nothing to something. And I can tell you, we are going to be doing interviews with seven, eight, and nine-figure entrepreneurs, and I am going to start doing um, multi-posts per week on the platform. So go subscribe now. Go check out all the stuff that I've done and watch out for the end of this quarter, fourth quarter, and first quarter of next year because I'm going to go hard on that podcast, right? I've been going hard on YouTube. My next thing is the podcast. So shout out to Brian. I appreciate you, brother, um, and that means the world to me, man. Do you have a discount uh, with the Do It For You FBA service? like the course in EYL University. Um, Eli, I do, I do not. Um, I do have a program discount for the EYL because shout out to Rashad and Troy. Those are the homies. Um, and you get some exclusive stuff through there, but there really is no discount on that. And to be completely honest, the, and again, this is not some scarcity marketing strategy, the bull crap fluff. This is God honest truth. We're the only people in the industry that do a full blown out business creation in the private label sector, not wholesale bull crap where you're selling other people's crap and you have no intellectual property, not drop shipping where you're making money today and tomorrow your, your account shut down. Full built out business that can sustainably sustain sales for many years to come that can exit at a high EBITDA multiple. We're the only person in the industry that does that. And the 30K that we offer or whatever it is right now is, is it, it's a steal. Like it blows my mind because I feel like these businesses, when they're done with the two year track record of sustainable sales of what we project is worth around a three to five X EBITDA multiplier. And that's being conservative. So it's a, it's really a steal. Um, if you're focused on the best, we're the right company for you. If you're focused on the cheapest or like the quickest, I don't think we're the right fit. How much percentage exactly would the AMZ team would you take if one was to do the done fee program, meaning when my first product start to sell? Again, like we're, we're stupid for doing this, but there is, there is no percentage in the private label program. In the private label done for you program, it's a flat rate cost for our team to build everything for you. And then on the back end, our internal team manages your PPC for a flat rate plus a small percentage of revenue generated from advertising. And that's like an incentive that we give to our team to give them some skin in the game so that they can go hard for you guys, right? But other than that, it's, I feel it's the most affordable, most powerful uh, program in the industry. I feel generally, and I can confidently say this, nobody's touching me in the private label space. Nobody. I know a lot of people in the wholesale space crushing it, doing crazy $100 million, $200 million a year. 
that's cool. You're selling other people's crap. You're buying it wholesale. You're doing nothing other than listing SKUs. Shout out to the wholesale. I'm not knocking them, but we're talking about building a real business. We're talking about building a Beats by Dre. We're talking about building a blender bottle. We're talking about building an apple. Like when we throw t three to ten thousand dollars a month, like I want my clients to crush that. Three to ten thousand dollars a month is life changing. Imagine selling your business for a hundred million dollars. Imagine selling your business for fifty million dollars. Like the back of this shirt says, "You're only one product away." Our slogan is, "You're only one product away." Blender bottle. Go to my seven figure product series here on the channel and channel and watch the video I did on blender bottle. One skew, one product. What is it? Fifty million. A year? One listing, one product, 10 million a year. Their brand is worth between 50 to 100 million dollars selling one categorical product. Yes, there's different variations, different colors, and different sizes. It is the same thing. That's Blender Bottle, right? So, like the one product away thing Apple, their phone, their computer, Beats by Dre, headphones. These are private label products that were just generic products with good marketing and good intuitive um, creation and enhancement of a product. So remember, you have to be an innovator. You have to be adap adaptive. If you can adapt and you can innovate and you throw in good marketing and a good process and procedure, that's an eight-figure, nine-figure company all day long. Cool, man. I know we're at over an hour. Was there anything else I can blitz through? I want to make sure all the questions get answered. Everybody gets served at the highest level. If not, um, when, when looking to launch a product, is it best to have a few other great sellers of the product with high, review, high revenues or just one to two? Okay, cool. So, Brian, the, the best way to tell that something is working if somebody else, if it's working for someone else. So, it blows my mind like when people get into this business, how they're worried by other people's success. I like to see other people's success. The only time you should be concerned in an industry or a category or subcategory about people's success, revenue, reviews, etc., is if it is a patented product. You're not going to go create a blender bottle. That was a problem. They innovated. They patented. They destroyed and created a monopoly. You cannot touch them. Right, they'll sell for probably a quarter of a billion dollars if they sell. Um, so th that if you see that, that's a red flag. If you're seeing an industry where there's no intellectual property and there's giants in there, there's dinosaurs in there, they're crushing it. There's other people who are getting traction and they're crushing it. I like to see that. When it comes to physical retail and physical brick and mortar, like when they're doing their due diligence about geographic and demographical placements of products and actual locations, they want to see a lot of density. They want to see a high density and a low geographic frequency of that type of product. What does that mean? If I'm going to create it, if I'm going to go launch, if I'm going to go do a Jimmy John's and I can actually tell you this because before I realized I'd be wasting millions of dollars, I was going to like, before I became successful, it was my dream to always have a McDonald's. And then I had the money to get a McDonald's. I was like, I'd be an idiot to get a McDonald's because you don't, you make peanuts. But when I was going through the process of doing the research to get a McDonald's, then I almost bought a chain of, uh, what were those, acai bowls? I almost bought a chain of acai bowls last year or the year before. I was going to get four of them, and I was going to launch them here in Austin. I started to do the research. The first component of the research is looking at the density of semantically relevant businesses in the actual uh, geographic placement or location. So when you think of... Dunkin' Donuts, I guarantee you in close density or approximation of that Dunkin' Donuts is a Starbucks and vice versa. If you look at Walgreens next to it across the street is CVS. If you look at Lowe's next to its Home Depot. So they're looking at high demand and they're looking at high frequency and close density. So most people are like, oh my God, there's these guys that have been selling for years and they have tons of reviews. If they don't have intellectual property, that means the industry needs a competitor. Competition is the best form of advertisement. In fact, if you take what works and you implement it to your advantage, remember, don't recreate the, don't recreate the wheel, just roll with it. One of my strategies that I've made hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars doing is creating my own competition, right? Because I know how competitors are and I know how the consumers are. Some consumers are going to want to try different things. So if I knew what was different from my brand and I created my brand that offered the thing that was different from my brand, so if my clients wanted to try something different, they'd be trying my brand, I get all the money. 
I knew that if people that came into my industry were scared because there was a lot of industry giants with tons of reviews and high volume and competitive prices, less people would want to get in there. So instead of having one giant, I would create three giants. Me and my business partner did this all the time and we dominated. We dominated the search results in Google. We dominated Amazon and industries do this when it comes to actual brick and mortar stores and all different types of retail. If you look at Johnson and Johnson, they order all, they own all the competition. If you go in the cereal aisle, you will be overwhelmed with the amounts of cereal. Did you know that less than half of a dozen companies own all the cereal that you see in the cereal aisle? If you go to Walmart, you have great value. Guess what? Walmart owns all of that, right? Then what you don't know is Kellogg's, which is the biggest manufacturer of cereal, manufacturers proprietary, the brand Great Value, which owns Walmart. So guess what? Kellogg's and Walmart gets all the money. Yet you have from ceiling to floor aisles of all this cereal, and you think they're different brands. So the game is to be sold, not told. People aren't talking about this for damn sure, not for free. So implement this stuff. Um, yeah, we got to shut this. Yo, this got to be taken down off YouTube, man. I just snapped. You guys can't get this stuff for free, man. Yeah, and we're past the hour. My wife's like, yo, yeah, 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 cut this off. You're supposed to be selling stuff on here and generating revenue. I want you guys, I want you guys to win. I appreciate you guys. God bless you guys. Remember, if you, if, if you get any value from this, you want us to keep doing this, you support us, you rock with us, share the content on your social media platform, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on. You would not like be able to understand quantifiably how much it means to me and our team when we see more likes on videos, when we see comments. I read all the comments. I respond to all of them. So if you want to participate, if you want to show your appreciation because I don't charge for this stuff, that's how you can do it, right? It's free. It takes no effort. I appreciate you guys. God bless you guys. Remember, you're only one product away. If you have not grabbed your copy of One Product Away, cover shipping and handling, I send you this book right to your address. 250 pages of gold. I cover the printing. I cover everything. You just cover shipping and handling, which is shipping is how much it costs to get your free stuff to you. And handling is how much the 3PL company charges me to facilitate picking, packing, and shipping to you. I'm eating the, the cost of the print because I believe that this, this book will change your life. The information in it will change your life. If you have uh, questions about any of the programs in AMZ Together, the AMZ Formula Curriculum, us building a business for you and partnering with you and managing your business for you or helping you step-by-step step from start to finish build and grow your very own physical product online business using Amazon, then reach out. The link is down below. Schedule a free call. Ask your questions. Get your questions answered. Utilize the resources that I'm giving you guys because if you want to become resourceful, if you want to get to the next level, you can do it the hard way or the easy way. So I'm just trying to give you guys easy ways, ways that I didn't have when I got started. So take action, execution over excuses. I'll see you guys next Friday, 30 minutes with a millionaire. Make sure you guys have notifications turned on. We have videos releasing every single week on the biggest channel on YouTube for private label. Remember, you're only one product away.